Hey everybody, this is Michael Pavlovich, Director of Character Art at Certain Affinity. Uh, and when I say character art, what I really mean is what we call sandbox art at Certain Affinity, which could be a range of uh, kind of a gradient between weapons, vehicles, mechs, equipment, characters, and creatures. So a pretty broad range. Essentially, anything that goes into engine with a bone and needs to be animated, uh, we take care of that on the art side. Um, just to give you a little bit of visual for that, I'm going to switch over here to my slides. So there's me, and there's the gradient I'm talking about. And in order to make good decisions when you're making a game, uh, like getting things tangible, playable, quickly in context, uh, I've always leaned on ZBrush as a crutch over the years. And what I love about ZBrush is that it's built for creation. Um, all of its tool sets and workflows are built around creating something. Uh, so blocking out, iterating, refining, finishing, all the steps in a pipeline to create an asset, uh, ZBrush is super helpful for that. And here we have an example of like, hey, if I'm just going to get something into engine quickly, it's representative, it's... Uh, performant enough we can kind of judge if it's going to be uh, worthwhile or not to pursue this endeavor all the way up to the final finished product there's no surprises and everybody's looking at the same thing on the screen all the departments uh, are evaluating it in context in engine in the end experience um, and again just rapid iteration and rapid workflows now, I'm not going to get too heavy into this. There's two presentations here where I, you know, if you want to watch an hour of me talking about just that uh, with more and more examples, uh, you can watch the GDC 2015 and the ZBrush Summit 2018 uh, where I do that for an hour and change. Now, as far as getting into this content, uh, I've been using ZBrush since I was a junior in college, uh, about a thousand years ago. Uh, and since then, I've put out a number of intro to ZBrush series. Uh, so if you're new to ZBrush, I'd start with the... Uh, Conan O'Brien looking one up there. Uh, it's just 50 videos, 10.5 hours to get you up and running with all the basics of ZBrush. And as a supplement to those intro videos, you can check out the playlist for the What's New release features. Um, so every time there's a major release, I take a deep dive into those features uh, and then create a playlist that breaks everything down along with a couple demos to showcase the features and example asset scenarios. And for this presentation, I thought it might be fun to take a uh, jaunt down memory lane uh, for those releases since 4R8 showcasing some quick examples, just enough time to kind of scratch the surface a bit on those releases. Uh, and the good news is if any of those pique your interest, uh, there will be some extra resources for you to deep dive on later. And right off the top, we'll start with 4R8. Uh, the big additions in 4R8 were the gizmo, packed with a bunch of extra features besides just geometry transposing. There's a ton of deformers in there, too. Uh, live booleans, which is super useful, super powerful, especially in ZBrush, which can already push so much information. Adding booleans to that uh, just really frees you up for exploration. Uh, vector displacement meshes, alpha 3D, 3D text, and SVG. Uh, so I'm going to hop in there, and let's do a quick demo. Uh, here you're going to see we have a hood uh, on this object, so we're going to recreate this. On the original 4R8, de 4R8 demo, uh, I did a pistol, and that's those are easier. It's basically a side view where you go through and you knife out a shape and you boolean a flat surface. I thought this would be a little bit more interesting because booleaning shapes on a rounded surface and having to resolve uh, rounded objects uh, and getting them to smooth correctly, it's a little bit more challenging. But we can let ZeriMesher do a lot of that heavy lifting for us. So I'm going to go down here to append, and we're just going to make the overall volume of that shape we're looking for. So if I go down here, we'll turn on transparency, and we'll scale this on down. I'm just going to kind of place this uh, here. So this will be the overall shape uh, of our hood. And then if I want to, you know, put a little bump out here, we can say, you know what, let's control drag this out using our gizmo, and we'll scale this down. And now we have just the overall basic shape of that hood. Now, if I go out of transparency mode and we take a look at this, let's go in here and just do an auto groups. You're going to see me doing a lot of custom menu stuff just for speed during these demos. Um, of course, every, all this functionality is just taken from these menus here. And if I use it a lot, let's put them in a custom menu here for quick access. Uh, but again, we have our volume here and we just need to kind of shape this up. So I'm going to hold down control shift. And uh, well, if I go in here now and uh, try to slice through these, uh, I can, but these aren't really welded yet. If I do Control Shift A here, you're gonna see this is all still one solid object. So instead of slicing through here just now, let's hit W, and you know you have a gizmo that you can move, scale, and rotate, uh, but you also have a bunch of functionality in this little gear icon. You can drop in new primitives. You can go in here and use your deformers, uh, and you also have this remesh by union, which will run a boolean on your visible objects here for that subtool. So now these are all one solid object here. So let's hold, go down Control Shift. We'll go in here, 
and we'll start cutting our shape for our object. So I'm gonna go hold down control shift. You can do a straight line through. Uh, you can also do a curved line through. You can tap alt once. That'll do kind of like a bezier curve through here. And then if you hold down uh, control shift and then alt twice, that'll put a, a sharper uh, angle in there. So I can hold down control shift and we're just gonna grab the pieces that we want and then delete hidden. And here we have our object here. So let's go ahead and say zero mesher half, uh, keep groups, and then that's gonna put a line right here where we made our new geometry. There's a ton of functionality and a lot of really fun, easy stuff you can do with Ziri Mesher to kind of get the topology that you want quickly, as opposed to having to worry too much about how to get, again, these curved surfaces to resolve uh, correctly. So you'll see me using Ziri Mesher a lot uh, to do some of that heavy lifting for me. Now I'm gonna demo some Boolean functionality. In order to do that, I need, a, I need a solid mesh. So I'm gonna go through here and say extrude uh, all polygons. I'm gonna pull in a fairly thick mesh for this, just this section of the demo. I'm gonna flip my normals there. So now we have this object, and let's say I wanna cut something into it. Well, I can pretty easily just put a cylinder on here and cut something in. And you may be thinking also like, well, if I wanna cut something in, I can go in here with my Z modeler brush and just do like a Q mesh polygroup ball and just punch holes through here. So if I hit D for dynamic subdivision, this is the dynamic preview. So shift D to turn it off, D to turn it on. I can go into my crease menu and say, let's crease PG or just run a crease tolerance. Um, let's uncrease all and just crease our P polygroups there. Uh, in fact, if these are a little harsh for you, you can say, you know, it's crease level of two, smooth subdiv of three. That'll give you a little bit of a fall off there. Uh, so you know, you can use the pre-existing geometry because it is pretty nice, you know, it gave you nice geo. So you can go in here, maybe do an inset polygroup ball and then maybe do like a Q mesh polygroup ball and hold down shift and pull along that surface normal. Um, get pretty decent results. However, you're kind of beholden to the geometry this has, uh, which in some instances may not be overly helpful for your design. And that's where uh, Booleans uh, can come into play. So you can still hit D for dynamic and, you know, again, uh, crease PG if you want to, crease your polygroups. Uh, but we can go in here and I can put in, you know, for example, a cylinder, put it on here and we'll go ahead and split those off into their own subtool. So I can push this cylinder through and then if I turn the cylinder into a subtractive mesh and turn on our live Boolean, uh, these are super powerful. It works with millions of polygons. You can use it with DynaMesh and surface noise and all sorts of cool stuff. And in fact, you don't even have to stick with the shape. Uh, you can go through here and anything in your IMM brush, you can just swap it out. And if you wanna see what I'm doing, literally it's just swapping these shapes out. Uh, in fact, these shapes are pretty pretty lame or tame I should say uh, there, there's nothing much to them if we go in here to BI brush insert IMM boolean you'll see there's a bunch of you know these shapes come with ZBrush but of course you can make your own uh, really cool shapes and you can go through here and uh, again uh, pop in your own shape so if I take this out here and then we'll turn off polyframe so we can see what we're doing as I cycle through these you'll see we're getting a bunch more interesting shapes here and the complexity is really up to you, you know. You can go through and get in some really, really complex uh, shapes in here is a cool one. So all you gotta do is hit W on your gizmo, and you can go through here and you can swap these out. And if you want to, you can you know, control drag off a copy. And again, if you need to see what you're doing, just turn on polyframe here and you can kinda go in here and estimate uh, where these things need to go. However, you can also make your own cool shapes. So if I go again back to our cylinder shape and we punch this all the way through, uh, let's turn on local symmetry so we can scale down this axis here. So here is a cylinder shape. Let's go back into that gizmo. And instead of using a new primitive shape or Boolean anything, we can use this extender here. And that'll put, again, let's see what we're doing. You can put uh, an extender through here. It'll extend through. And now we have a pill shape. So again, I'm going to go to punch this all the way through my object. Hold down control and we'll drag this over. And hold down control. We'll drag another copy over here. And again, these are live Booleans, so you can go through and you can modify these however you'd like. And again, we'll turn off polyframes so you can see this. So this is the result we're getting. We're not beholden to the geometry we have. We're making design decisions based on, you know, whatever we want, basically. And uh, let's go ahead and resolve this. So I'm going to take these shapes and we'll go ahead and just turn on dynamic to get a smoother result here. And if you want, you can just leave it that way. I mean, it'll even render fine. And it's fairly non-destructive. You want to make any changes to this, feel free. But we're going to go ahead and apply this. We're going to go down here to Boolean this time and dynamic subdivision. Before I hit make Boolean mesh, we're going to turn everything else off. So we're just going to Boolean these objects here. That'll toss out a U mesh. And uh, here we go. We got our shapes. Um, 
if I want, if I just need the shell with a thickness, I mean, I can zero mesh this, it'll do a fine job, but I can simplify this even more just by grabbing these pieces, which are the ones I really want. We'll say uh, half and then just zero mesh. There we go. And again, you can keep zero meshing half to see, you know, what kind of geometry it'll end up giving to you. And you could get low enough to where you have almost a working game res depending on your shape. So let's say we like this. Again, we'll just Q-mesh all our polygons in. We'll go ahead and flip our normals back. And because we have nice clean geometry again, we can go in here and say inset uh, polygroup all. And it'll do it on all the polygroups here. And then again, we could say Q-mesh. We're going to pull along the surface normal um, using polygroups as like a visual visible representation of basically like selection sets or face selections uh, it's so much easier I, I wish every modeling program uh, was as visible and on the screen as ZBrush is with those selections uh, and again we can say you know it's crease PG or run a crease tolerance crease level of two smooth subdiv of three get a nice little fall off there so we have some armor going and I'm gonna go hop back in here we'll go ahead and append this shape back and we'll get rid of these working shapes here. Now this isn't real geometry just yet. If we do shift D, that'll go back to our low res and then D is our higher res. We can go ahead and apply those uh, subdivisions so it's real geometry. Uh, another thing that came out in 4R8, if we go in here to BC brush chisel are these vector displacement meshes. So if I go in here to a really obvious one like this one, you can pull on here and let's go ahead and subdivide one more time to get a little more resolution out of here. Unlike regular alphas, which would be like these, which are just basically, here's a multi-alpha brush, by the way. You can load up geometry. It'll turn it into selectable alpha. So you can take one of these and then pull it on here. Um, so alpha brushes don't have, a 2D alpha doesn't have an, any undercuts. It just goes straight down. However, vector displacement, which ZBrush has, has all sorts of undercuts. So you can do really complex alphas, create them really easily on the fly. and you can apply them. In fact, you can change the stroke over here and turn it into like a repeating element. If we turn on like our lazy mouse, increase our lazy step, we can, we can use this as a repeating hard surface element if you wanted to. Uh, but there's also another one. We can go in here to B, C, the chisel brushes here. So you can choose different tips on your chisel brush. And again, it's just using that same technology you can go through and you can cut panels really quickly. Um, another option, and we're skipping ahead a little bit. I'm gonna go down here to delete lower. And this is a newer thing that came out, but here's knife curve. So if I also wanted to just cut panels right into here, I can go through here and just turn on brush radius, drop this down a little bit, and then I can go through and just literally slice through uh, panel lines in our object. And that's cutting all the way through these objects and leaving behind uh, geometry here. And if I want, I can separate out this little piece here. We can go ahead and say split hidden. And then on top of all this, if you want to infer functionality, you can go and grab uh, some hard surface alpha brushes that you've downloaded or you've created in ZBrush. Uh, again, we can have multiple meshes in here, so we can just grab some basic shapes. Let's turn our Z intensity down just a little bit. So you can go through here. And I think I did this on the top of the original one too. You know, you can go through here. Now that you have real geometry, you can make some interesting shapes along here. Or again, like I said, just infer some functionality through here. Let's put like a bar along here and then maybe an inverted bar along here. And since this is an, a separate object right here, again, I'm just gonna go ahead and just pop this into its own piece here. You can put this up underneath here Maybe get a little layer differentiation between those two. And basically just hard surface the heck uh, out of your object here. And at the end of the day, after doing a bunch of that and uh, a couple other fun ZBrush creation techniques, you'll have a whole bison. And then basically from here, I just went through and I literally decimated it down, auto UV'd it, and then, uh, you know, throw it into your texture program texture it up and if we hop back into art station you can check out the bison here and you can see the making of here but you can see you can make a whole scene and animate it and light it and render it and if you want to dig a little bit deeper the 2021.7 videos here's the making of the bison but it also goes a little bit deeper than that when you come into this playlist here here's all the new features starting at number 84 of all the 2021.7 stuff that's um, more suited toward that bison, but 
like I said before, here's the ZBrush 4R8. What's new playlist? Here's the 61 videos that make up what happened, what was new in ZBrush 4R8. So we'll hop back over to our slides. So in ZBrush 2018, and I, I wanna run you through the resources just one more time, as maybe the last time I do it. But uh, again, here's the 2018, it's a 56 videos for the 2018 releases. And uh, what I'll usually end up doing is a little bit of demo uh, stuff. So there'll be time lapses and quick demos of just little projects for each of these. So here you're gonna see the uh, Project Primitive at work along with Sculptures Pro, the automatic tessellation. So I won't spend too much time on this, let's hop right into that demo. So one of the staples of ZBrush is DynaMesh, which allows you to kind of manipulate geometry and still maintain a sculptable surface. Uh, but it's kind of a two-step process. So let me show you what I mean by that. So I'm gonna go ahead and isolate this down. This is one from uh, one of my live streams here. I'm gonna narrow this down to just looking at Lumpy Space Princess here. And we're gonna turn on polyframe so we can see a little bit better uh, the, what we're gonna be doing to the geometry. So if I go in here to BSH, which is our snake hook brush, you're gonna see, hey, this brush performs really well when you use it with Sculptures Pro. You can hit OK. Uh, it won't turn it on for you, but Sculptors Pro is basically right there. But before I turn that on, I'm going to show you uh, if I stretch this geometry out or just grab some of this geo, as I begin to pull away, it's going to really stress and tax that geometry uh, that exists there. Now, however, I can go in here to Geometry DynaMesh, and there's some DynaMesh settings in here. In fact, before I DynaMesh, I can grab this resolution slider, just click and pull off, and then hover over my geometry. It'll pick this resolution for me. So that when I go over here and turn on the DynaMesh button, that's going to DynaMesh my object, essentially reproject all of my geometry here. So now instead of hanging that, having that really stressed geo, we have nice evenly spaced, mostly quads uh, to play with. So now I can go through here and I can say like, you know what, let's smooth this and maybe inflate this and then control drag to re-DynaMesh. And I still have a really nice surface to work with. However, if I go over here to say the fingers and I look at these fingers now, is you're gonna see these fingers, which if I go back to our history, were previously unwelded uh, when I when I DynaMesh them. Again, drag off and then DynaMesh. Uh, it's gonna weld all of those together. But it does allow me flexibility with my geometry to you know sculpt whatever I want and then DynaMesh. To avoid both of those, one thing I can do if I go back here to my start, let's go to here to BSH, back to my snake hook brush, and this I'm gonna turn on Sculptures Pro. And now when you see when I use this brush and I pull off my geometry, it's gonna be tessellating on the fly. So as I move my brush, depending on my brush size, it's going to be tessellating as I go. Uh, to show you this in action with the brush size, let's go in here to BSJ or the spiral brush, and you're gonna see with a brush size about yay, yay size, I can uh, pull out a spiral like this and I can zoom in and then make my brush size smaller, hold down Alt and we'll go the other way come in here, make my brush size smaller, hold down, uh, let go of Alt, go the other way, and you're gonna see as my brush gets smaller, so does my detail. My brush size controls my detail uh, size of my object here. And of course, there's settings in here that'll control that underneath your brush and under global. And you can go through here with your smooth brush and you can actually pinch pieces off and delete geometry. So you can move and add detail on the fly and tessellate on the fly with Sculptures Pro. So as you can imagine, if I turn all my, all my people back on here, going in here with my snake hook brush, and of course you can also, I'm gonna hit C to sample this, you can use Sculptures Pro with color if you want, or BSK, which is snake hook two, you can actually have it come straight down, uh, straight to the camera, if you'd like. And if I go in here to B, S, and I'm, I'm typing in B for the brush menu, S to narrow it down to my S brushes, and you're gonna see we have uh, Snake Hook, Snake Sphere is another really fun one. So if you're doing appendages, or just kind of, again, taxing your geometry and you want it to tessellate on the fly, a really, really good option. And there's also some snake curves in here. So these are really interesting for fish, uh, fish fins. So you can drag a curve on here, and then as you pull off, it'll start adding some turbulence. So as it, as it continues to go out, that curve will start reacting and you get some really really nice results with that if you want some more control than that there's another option here for like snake curve 2 you can basically pull out a curve and then depending on where you grab the curve in which direction um, you can have a nice controlled surface being generated from a curve and again sculptors pro is tessellating that on the fly and this is kind of a non sequitur here but if i go in here to our tools and just grab a polysphere and we unmask the top. And I go in here to dynamics. We'll get to dynamics in just a bit. I'm gonna turn on expand and inflate. 
Let's turn that inflate down a, a bit and then the expand up a bit. And then when I run the inflate, uh, you'll see you'll get really quick Krang brains. So that's how we uh, ended up doing this section uh, right here on Krang. But let's keep talking about Sculptor's Pro. I'm going to hop over here into the mechanical skull. And this time we'll switch back to our startup material. So let's say you've decimated something down for 3D printing, but you realize uh, you really want to add some more detail on your object. So if you remember, you know, if we, if we wanted to, let's go back to our standard brush here. And I'm going to say, let's go ahead and clone this brush off. Let's change this to a dot stroke, grab an alpha, focal shift down to negative 100. And let's say I want to stamp in some screw ports. So if I hold down Alt and try to do that, you're going to see it works surprisingly well. If I turn on Polyframe, you're going to see that's because Sculptors Pro is turned on. So as I'm going through here and stamping that detail, it's updating and tessellating that geometry on the fly. Um, if you want to, uh, in fact, if we turn off Sculptors Pro and then try to do that, you'll see how limiting this geometry is. There's nothing really in there for it to grab onto and stamp. Um, another thing you can do is hold down Shift with Sculptors Pro turned on, and we'll have Z add uh, down to zero. And now we can literally just go through here and smooth, quote unquote, without any Z intensity. It's just tessellating that geometry. So if you want to put in some detail in this area, feel free to go through here, make your draw size, whatever resolution you'd like. And then you can go in here and spot add detail. And in this case, you know, you don't even need Sculptress Pro. You just go in here to Standard Brush. You've already used Sculptress. So now if we go in here and again, let's crank up. There's the intensity here. So if I go through here and just start stamping in our screw ports, you'll see we get uh, plenty of detail here. Now again, if I go over here and try to stamp no detail, if I go up here, plenty of detail because I've added in and tessellated in that geometry. Now another thing you can do, and we'll get to project history uh, in later videos, but I can hold down Control and tap in this and that'll go ahead and store these vert positions in history. So if I wanted to, we talked about Dynamesh before, so let's go down here to Geometry Dynamesh. I'm going to crank this way down. I'm basically going to voxelize an envelope for this just to kind of seal up all my geometry, make it one contiguous mesh, and I'm doing that with Dynamesh. However, you're going to see I lost some of that detail. However, if I go in here to Brush, so B H R for History Recall, it's going to look at those stored points in history and we can turn Sculptors Pro on so as I'm going over this detail with and projecting that detail back, let's go ahead and turn off X symmetry here. We can go through and A, we can add geometry and get back the, and project back the detail. So if I do this without my polyframe turned on, you'll see I'm tessellating this on the fly and I'm projecting that original detail back from that point in history onto my mesh. So you can very quickly create an envelope and then just spot check or spot go get uh, your detail uh, back into your scene just by using a combination of Sculptures Pro and in this case the History Recall brush, which again wasn't released in 2018, this came a little bit later, but we'll get more into that. Uh, if you ever run into any technical limitations, Sculptures Pro does work with the visibility, so you can actually just grab a little chunk, a uh, slice of this area, and go in here and just get your details back, which is a, vis a small piece of your mesh showing. Or if you just, just simply want to just focus in on an area and not have anything in your way, uh, again, Sculptures Pro will work with visibility. So just a couple quick cool things that you can do with Sculptures Pro, uh, and we'll head back to our slides. And 2019 was one of those releases where uh, ZBrush came out with stuff I didn't even know I needed uh, in the form of uh, Zero Mesh 3.0, the hard surface zero meshing, which I do a lot, uh, and then the Spotlight Snapshot 3D and NPR rendering. So instead of PBR rendering, for example, uh, we have non-photorealistic rendering for sketchy kind of examples. So let's hop back into the demo. And for this one, I went ahead and pulled the 4R8 demo, but eh, that's okay. So basically we have this object here, which is just going to replace this one here. Just show you how I made it really quick, or one way to make it. Uh, I can go in here to zero mesh or half, adapt to size down, detect edges for me. When it does that, it'll give me nice clean geometry, regardless of how the original looked. Um, I can go ahead and subdivide this a couple times, and I'm going to delete lower. Uh, and then I can go in here with my knife curve brush, we can literally just make this shape really quickly. So again, Alt-Tap twice to go and slice through all these different component parts. And I'm not overly concerned about the shape because as we know from previous demos, all I have to do is go through here, I can do a quick Ziri mesh, half, keep groups this time, and just get nice new geometry. Can't beat that. However, instead of using uh, Booleans like we did, what we can do now or what was introduced in 2019, I should say. If I hit the comma key to go to my light box, we're gonna go in here to Spotlight, and we're gonna grab some of these hard surface options in here. 
So I can grab any of these shapes and we just happen to have a pill shape in here, which is great. Of course, I can go in here and I can hit this um, quick select button and I can go through and cycle these. But if I'm looking for just the shape, I can go through and I can use this. A lot of really fun, cool stuff you can do in here. You can tile uh, multiple in here. You can go through and like extend vertically and horizontally if you want to. Uh, based on those midlines, we'll snap it to the center and we can extend horizontally. All sorts of, you can Boolean alphas together, you can paint any number of things. Uh, you can even create clothes with this. Uh, however, what I'm going to use this for is Snapshot 3D. So we're going to go down here and we're going to turn off our pistol. And we're just going to, we can either move this into place or I can hit Z to go out of this mode and I can move my object into place behind it. Uh, once I'm ready, if I have Live Boolean turned on, I can hold down Alt and hit the Snapshot button. And when I turn this off, you're going to see it punches a hole right through my object. And again, this is just a live boolean. All it is is just an object sitting here. If I go into solo mode, it just creates an object for me using that alpha uh, that I can then go through and I can just use my gizmo and control drag off multiple copies of this. Uh, and because it is a live boolean, I can go through and I can see like, okay, does this look cooler? Do I need to scale these things up? Maybe if I go up to the top here. Actually, that's legit cool. Pretty neat. Um, and then from this point, what I would normally do is basically what I did in my art station, uh, ZBrush Summit 2018. I went there uh, to ZBrush. Uh, we did a summit here, and basically here's you know the making of this weapon and multiple ways to very quickly make weapons in ZBrush, and then eventually you know get them decimated down, thrown in through Painter, and then uh, get those animated out. Uh, just as kind of a preview of what the weapon could be. So very, very quick, rapid iteration using ZBrush, which I do all the time. However, what was introduced in 2019 is also super cool, and that is, if I hit the comma key again, and we're going to hop up here into our render sets, if I double-click this black and white thin outline, you're going to see it doesn't seem to do too much in my scene here. However, as soon as I hit that BPR button, the best preview render button, let's go ahead and turn on live Boolean again so we get those chunks taken out. You see we get an awesome pin and ink render, and where you find these settings is up here in Render. Go in here under BPR Filters. Let's go ahead and uh, turn on Perspective, and we'll turn on the floor so we get a nice shadow here. And now when I hit BPR with these render filters applied, and you have a bunch of render filters you can go through and change. Again, if I want to go through here uh, and turn on a new one, and we can set this to say, let's do some screen tone dots. And for this front color, I'm going to change that to white. And then I want this to just be uh, in my shadow here. So I'm going to put it in my shadows. But I don't want it the shadow of my object, just the shadow on the ground. I can change my mask here to negative one. So now we have a screen tone uh, print in the shadow here. I can go through and I can make the dots bigger or smaller. I can invert that so that it's black with white dots or white with black small dots. You know, whatever you want to complete your NPR or non-photorealistic rendering. And again, it's simple as just going in here and changing your filters and your blend modes. If I double error, if I go into my light box again and just grab this blueprint here, another really cool one. Let's go ahead and turn off perspective. We can get a nice orthographic render on a blueprint. And you can see all it is is just taking these filters and doing, you know, finding edges and dropping in grids and changing colors uh, all in your uh, filters here. So you can go through and do really, really cool quick renders that aren't completely reliant on anything being photorealistic, but more stylized and illustrative. So we'll hop back over to our slides. And 2020 was a pretty monster release. Uh, things I'm not gonna cover like thumbnail and cam view, uh, but a lot of this I am gonna cover, and we're gonna go ahead and use, I think one of my live stream models, uh, the Oogie Boogie there, uh, to show off some of this functionality that was in 2020. So let's hop back over to the demo. And I'm really not going to be able to do the 2020 release or the 2021, any of these releases. I'm not doing them justice, so please feel free to dive in there a little bit deeper than I'm going. Uh, but for example, here's a couple cool features. We've got our object here uh, from one of my live streams, I think. And in case you don't know, uh, if we go in here and we start poly painting and we turn on RGB for our brush, uh, we're literally painting on the vert. So if I drop this down in our subdivision history, it's going to be lower resolution painting and then more verts equals more higher resolution painting, which really frees you up from being able to color something or paint on something without having to worry about UVs. And you can do both um, and they're really powerful and I'll show you what I mean 
Uh, but while we're talking about polypane, let's go down here and just adjust our polypane. Again, there's no textures, no UVs, just a polypane on here. I'm going to go in here to adjust colors. And in this case, let's go ahead and adjust this over to the black light version of this character here. So I'm going to go ahead and crank up that saturation, maybe the intensity just a bit and just get a cool black light version. So again, it's going to adjust those polypaint colors. And that's just vert information in space that holds also RGB information. Now, let's say I did want to convert this to a texture or, you know, Ziri mesh this. So essentially, what well, let's, you know, let's say this is the DynaMesh version of my character and it's all polypainted up, but I want to transfer this information to a Ziri mesh version. So I'm going to hold down control and tap this point in history, and it's going to store these points of data, the verts, uh, along with our RGB information. And then I can go through here and I'm going to say just delete higher now. So let's say I went through and I Ziri mesh this like we did in the previous videos, you know, put a poly group on either side, Ziri mesh this result, and this is what I have. To get that poly paint and detail information back from my high resolution sculpt, all I have to do is go over here to project and say project history. That's gonna project those points that I have stored in history onto these new points here. We can hit control D, project history, control D, project history. And what that's doing is subdividing and then projecting the color information and the vert position information. So I have all my detail back from my original DynaMesh sculpt and all the color information. And the super cool thing about having subdivision history now is I can go up here to say Z plugin down here to UV master. Uh, I'm going to turn off symmetry. It's not symmetrical, but I'm going to turn on polygroups because again, we do have a front and a back polygroup here. I'm going to say work on clone because that's the safest thing to do. I'm going to go ahead and unwrap here. So it'll look at my polygroups and put a seam there. And then when I hit flatten, you'll see these are the UVs that I have. Perfect. Unflatten, copy my UVs. We'll head back on over to our original mesh here and we'll just paste those UVs right onto my object. So now that I've done that, I can go down here, uh, you know, to get a little burlap texture on here, we can go into surface noise. And by default, I do already have the burlap texture on here because I've already been working on this object here. But if I had just had it in 3D mode, that would give me a planar projection. So it would project it from you know, whatever I came in as and it would start stretching uh, as it projects planar on my object. But now that we have UVs, we can go ahead and put UV option on there. And now we have a nice, imported burlap texture on our object here. As a displacement map, it's not even applied to our object yet. You can just have it uh, as surface noise. Another cool thing is now that we have UVs, I can sculpt and paint uh, on my UVs in a flattened state. So I'm gonna go down here to UV map and I'm just gonna say morph UV. That's gonna morph our object into just UVs here but they're just gonna behave exactly like geometry. So if it's easier for me to go in and paint and or sculpt on my object while it's flattened, you know, if I wanna put in a seam line, it's totally doable. In fact, while it's flattened, I can go in here to say texture import. I'm just gonna grab like a color texture here. We'll go ahead and add it to our spotlight. And I'm gonna hold down shift and we're gonna tile this a couple times. And now instead of this green pattern, I can turn on RGB. We can go in here to brush samples we can turn on spotlight projection so we can we can spotlight project rgb or uh z add information or sculpting information height information but um in this case i'm just going to go through and just paint so i'm just going to paint these colors right into my object here and we'll go into uh, morph we'll turn off morph uv and then we're back uh, in our original state with our poly paint on our object here so super easy again to sculpt paint uh, in the flattened state with our uvs Another thing we can do, I'm going to go into my Damien standard brush and we're just going to put in like a little uh, divot here so we can sculpt, we can do Z sub and RGB information. So I can go through here and I can just kind of put in a little divot and then I'm going to switch back to RGB and Z add for my standard brush and we'll put in some stitches. Let's go ahead and raise our intensity up. So here's some stitches on our object here. So again, I can do this in a flattened state or I can do it in this state. Another really cool uh, addition in this version. If I go in here to BX, that gives us our extractor brushes. I'm going to take this extractor T brush and I'm going to hit, uh, I'm going to make my brush size so that it kind of fits over the entire object. Then I'm going to hit the G key and that puts me in a state where I can literally just drag over anything that I've sculpted and it'll pick up a uh, height and color information. Now, one thing I kind of want to be careful of is that, you know, I'm keeping track of my 
undo history. This worked fine. Uh, however, if I don't need those points in history stored anymore, I can just control click on the latest and then control click again, and that'll go ahead and get those points out of my memory. But since I've used the extractor brush, I now can extract this data that I have here and I can put it anywhere on my mesh, just sculpting along. And again, if I want to you know, put this in a flattened UV state, if it's easier to you know create a seam along here, or on the inside of a leg, or if it's difficult to kind of sculpt, you can just morph your UVs and then go ahead and morph them back. And if you want to change anything, again, you can go in here to your poly paint, adjust your colors, and you can even specify, you know what, I just want to darken these stitches up. Just go ahead and drag out onto the brown. That can unmask those, and if you hit OK at this point, you can just have a mask and you can go in here and paint if you'd like. But again, while you're in, the adjust colors mode, you can literally go through here and be like, you know what, I want them a little more saturated and a little less intense. Go ahead and darken them up, hit OK, control drag, and there you go. You've adjusted not all of the poly paint, but just the specific areas of the poly paint that you want to change. Of course, if you did want to put these to a texture, it's super easy to do. All you got to do is go in here to texture map, create new from poly paint, and there you go. It's applied to a texture. And from that point, you can go in and you can, you know, texture it up or uh, transfer any of that with some any other data from a texturing program. And then again, back on here, you can kind of see, you can kind of see the making of. Again, this was a live stream, so you can kind of see how uh, a lot of this stuff was created. Um, again, using ZBrush as that backbone. So we'll hop back over to our slides. And the 2021 release was the gift that kept on giving. If I go up here, uh, you know, to the ArtStation page, uh, here's the, it's actually 106 videos uh, breaking down the 2021 plus all the point releases, which we're going to break down separately next. Uh, but even in here, if we just, you know, click through these videos really quickly, uh, there's a tremendous amount of cloth simulation and dynamics that allows you to do all sorts of things, uh, retopology, snapping edges, uh, you know, and when we come into like dynamic simulation, there's so much stuff you can do outside of cloth. You can do uh, transferring body topology, you can do uh, snapping uh, face topology, uh, <laughs> running that on fiber mesh, uh, hair cards, stuff like that. And again, you know, even just creating clothes using Snapshot 3D, which we covered earlier, you know, you can create quick clothing uh, based on that and just, you know, simulating uh, things around. And in fact, if I go back into here, uh, here's all the demos broken down, but even even going through here and making a car and then wrecking a car and then banging around uh, barrels and stuff. <laughs> There's so many crazy things you can do. Uh, again, just introducing uh, some functionality in the ZBrush. Uh, you can get really, really creative with your solutions. But enough about that. Let's head back over to our demo. And the monster release that 2021 was, I'm not going to be able to cover everything, but just really quickly, some highlights. If I go in here to Subtool, uh, let's go to the very top here, and I'm going to say Insert a Polyplane. And so we have our plane here, and if I go to the side with this plane selected, you're going to see it kind of disappears because I'm in an orthographic view and it's flat. Uh, however, I can go in here to Dynamic, and this is something that was added. We can go in here to Dynamic, and of course that'll give us some smooth subdivisions, but also a thickness slider, so I can put in some dynamic thickness. Um, and when we were creasing earlier and adding smooth subdivisions and crease levels, um, again, that's dynamic. That's a preview of what that mesh would look like. So I can do Shift-D to turn it off, and it's just back to this, and then D to turn it back on. Now It'll add thickness in any subdivisions or anything that's in here. So, uh, for example, I can go over here to our dynamics menu, our new dynamics in 2021 menu, and I can go in here and I can scale this out. And I don't want to drop this plane onto this head, so I can go in here to the dynamics menu. We can turn our gravity down just a bit, and I'm going to turn on a collision volume. Anything that's not selected will become a collision volume in this case. Uh, so then I can just go through here and literally just run the simulation. Let's crank that strength up just a bit, and it'll go ahead and fall on our head. Of course, we're not beholden to just letting gravity run its course. We can go in here and we can say BTC, which is transpose cloth, and then I can literally just pull this thing around the object uh, in this way. So this, again, is using that collision volume of the other objects that are in the scene, and then we're putting cloth on top of that. Now, don't think for a minute that this is only able to be used on, you know, nice quad meshes or anything like that. You can literally turn dynamics on for anything um, and use dynamics in any number of ways. Again, I can't cover them all, uh, but we can certainly 
Let's talk about some. So I'm going to hold down Control Shift, and we're going to go in here to Slice Curve, and let's make it so he can at least see out of his hoodie. So I'm just going to slice this off, and we'll go ahead and delete Hidden. And we'll zero mesh this. We'll turn on half and zero mesh this down. So now we got a, I don't know, a little cloak here. Uh, it all, so Dynamics also works with subdivisions. So if I hit Control D, that's going to basically add a subdivide uh, right here. And if you remember, I also do have Dynamics. So I can turn Dynamic on, it'll add an extra two subdivisions on top of that and thickness back on our object. So again, if I go over here to Gravity and run the simulation, it'll go ahead and snap to his collision mesh and then Gravity around. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to turn off smooth subdivisions. And if I want to get finer wrinkles, I can hit uh, Control D. I can just keep subdividing and I can keep running the simulation here. Or going into my move brush, you know, just kind of <laughs> moving it around uh, on his head here to position it at using him as a collision volume. Um, if I'm done simulating and using him as a collision volume, I can just turn that off and I can focus in on the cloth here. And I, of course, I can go through and I can, you know, sculpt in any wrinkles that I think uh, should be there. And then I can enhance these wrinkles uh, with cloth brushes. So I can go in here to like B, C, K for cloth hook and I can go through and I can move cloth around. And again, it's going to, it's basically a brush with built in, if I go here to elasticity, uh, built-in simulation iterations, and I can do that with any brush. So for example, if I switch over to my pinch brush, you can see by default simulation iterations is down at zero. I can crank that up, and now I can go through here and I can use my pinch brush, and it'll actually run the cloth algorithm while I'm using this brush uh, to kind of enhance my wrinkles. Of course, if again, I can hit Control D to subdivide, I can get finer and finer wrinkles in here, and I can also control that through uh, this firmness here. Oh, another super cool thing you can do, if I turn off um, let's just turn down our thickness down to zero here, and I'm going to go to my subdivision. So basically, you see if subdivision level one, we have huge quads, and then over here, they get smaller and smaller as we subdivide up through our mesh. So if I go down to maybe, say, subdivision level two, you're going to see another uh, option down here called micro poly. So I can click that on, and if we go in here, we can turn this into chain mail. So I'm just going to grab a chain link, and you're going to see it's going to replace every single face on that cloth with a chain link mesh. And it's just an instance, so I literally can go back in here uh, with my move brush and still move this around. Oops, I forgot we turned off our collision volume. We'll turn that back on. So now as I'm moving this cloth around, it'll react with the head. And because we put chain link on, it's going to behave as if it was chain link moving around. Although in reality, again, this is just a dynamic preview. We can turn that off. And really all you're doing is simulating this low res cloth against this collision volume, but with dynamic on and micro poly on, it's showing you what it would look like if you went in here and you had a chain link uh, mesh being subdivided. And again, it is respecting those distances between those verts because it is a cloth sim. So if I bunch this thing up, um, it will continue to react and behave like cloth. Uh, and if I want to, I can up the subdivision. And again, it's every phase gets an instance. So They'll get finer and finer, and you can always swap these out at any point if you want to turn this into a weave. You can go and put these, uh, put a weave on here, and of course you can make your own uh, custom micro polys to whatever kind of surface you're wanting. But uh, again, super super flexible and fun to play with. And again, Dynamics is tied into a lot of different systems within ZBrush, so you can use it just as turning stuff into a collidable object and then running a simulation on it or using simulations with your brushes to get an effect. And I'm gonna hop into right into 2021.5, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off here. Uh, so we'll talk about this. So you can see I have a lot of detail on this reptile head here, and you can use the uh, cloth, dynamic cloth on wrinkles as well. You can just treat it like a surface. Uh, so if we drop this down to maybe just to level three and we go in with our pinch brush, and again, that pinch brush has simulation iterations turned on. Let's go ahead and turn off our collision volume here. So now you can see I can kind of pinch uh, geometry over here and it'll behave like cloth. And if I want more uh, resolution, I can go in here and like subdivide subdivision level four. Um, and if you're starting to hit your max points over here, which we're getting close to, always remember you can go in and you can just hold down control shift and just lasso a selection in here and then go through and uh, use dynamic simulation as much as you want. Um, you don't have to have the entire object showing. But since we're not to our max points yet, we can go in here and again, use pinch to kind of enhance these wrinkles. However, if I go in here to like say brush cloth hook, which we, we played with earlier, I can go through here and I can kind of pull his skin around, but like I, 
I kind of want to move his his flesh, uh, but I, I want to kind of limit the range of motion for this particular brush. So I can do that by going down here to this 2021.5 feature, which is thick skin. I can turn that on, and then you have a little preview here. So as I inflate this, that's going to show you the limit that this brush is allowed to go to. So if I turn it up just a bit, and then I go in here with my cl brush uh, cloth hook brush, now when I go in here and pull the skin, it's actually going to pull across um, only to a certain amount, in this case 9.48 units, and you're going to see it's like I'm pulling skin across a bony understructure. You know, we got a skull underneath there and we're pulling skin across it. So you can use thick skin uh, to kind of go through here and kind of push areas in here as well. And kind of go through here. Instead of using uh, just pinch or anything, you can go through here and you can again move stuff around uh, and limit the effect. And of course this works for uh, any number of or any brushes really. So if I turn off thick skin and we go up to subject level six where we got a lot of detail, we can turn thick skin back on and again give us a, you know, dial in that preview here. So if you go into like the clay buildup brush, as I use this brush, eventually it's going to cap out uh, only to go to that amount. I can switch over to my standard brush. I can use my standard brush. Uh, any brush in here uh, or hold down Alt, it'll dig in only down to that amount. Now another brush that was introduced in 2021.5 is BC Brush Contrast. We have Contrast Delta, which is just gonna continuously add contrast and then Contrast Target, which if I go in here, I can literally just go in and just give these things a little pop. You know, there's not quite enough contrast in these details, just use this brush to kind of drag over. Uh, or if you wanna do it to your entire object, you can go down here, let's turn off thick skin, Deformation, and you can just run contrast on the entire object. Just pull the slider up and you can add contrast as you go to the right or in fact you can even go negative contrast and just kind of smooth uh, your object out so a lot of different ways uh, to use those features but also there's so much more you can do with them so again I'll give you some resources where you can go and check those out so that was kind of a twofer. We did 2021 and 2021.5. Uh, heading into 2021.6, again, I'm just gonna jump right into the demo. The only thing I don't think we covered is the Ray Trace AO masking, uh, but everything else should be there. So we'll hop right into that demo. 2021.6 had some good additions as well. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take this head here and we'll just turn everything off, except for these two. And if I hold down control and we go to the mask options, you can see we have some uh, mesh extrude options. For example, like mesh balloon, I can go to the side here and I can draw out a balloon shape and we can hold that shift and we can, we can add to this balloon shape like so and then hold down alt and delete from the moon, uh, balloon shape. So a lot of really cool mesh extrusion techniques. The one we're gonna use is mesh project. So I can go through here and I hold down control. I'm gonna drop the Z intensity down a bit. And I'm going to go in here to stroke lazy mouse and turn that off. So while I'm going through here, in fact, we don't we don't even need X symmetry on. Uh, we just go through here and I'm just going to draw leaves on the surface of this object here. And again, the thickness of the leaf is uh, dependent on the Z intensity. And I again, I can go through here and I can hold down Alt and I can delete any areas of the mesh. Or I, can, I can hold down Control Shift, Control and then Shift and that'll add to areas of the mesh. So again, I can just go through here really quickly and I'm just basically putting a blanket of geometry down, going in here and cleaning it up like so. So now that we've done this, uh, we basically have leaves like onion skin on this head. So I'm gonna go through and I hold down control shift. I'm just gonna grab these top poly groups here. I'm gonna split those off and I'm gonna go in here to Ziri mesh half. Uh, which we've done a bunch of different times. I guess we don't need groups on. And we're just going to get those uh, a little bit simplified. So just like we did before, I can go in here to our Dynamics menu. I'm going to turn on our Collision Volume. Hit BTC for Transpose Cloth. And now again, we can go through here and these leaves will automatically collide with the cloth. And I can go through here and I can kind of scale them in and maybe scale them back and wrinkle them up a little bit, maybe move them back this way and if I want again I can go in here to dynamic subdivision turn this on uh, maybe give them a little bit of thickness through here there we go so we got some more leaves on this head so if I turn everything else back on you can see how quickly mesh extrusion can help you just kind of block things out another really interesting one if I go through here 
and go into, uh, we have curve alpha. So for example, it'll take a, a, any alpha, let's go into solo mode here. So any alpha, and we can pull this out. If I go to the other side, let's go ahead and turn off dynamic for a second. You're gonna see it's taking the star alpha and it's just generating its own geometry based on the alpha. So if I update this alpha to be the arrow, it'll generate that geometry, the ring, etc. So again, it's gonna create geometry for you and then give you an alpha extrusion uh, down your curve path here. There's another one. If we go ahead and tap off of here and we go in here to BE brush extrude profile. Uh, instead of allowing an alpha to control it, you're allowing geometry to control it. Uh, so you can pick a piece of geometry and then you can go through here. Of course, you can make your own custom geo. It doesn't, it's not relying on just any one of these, but we can go through here and you're seeing it's taking this geometry up here and then applying it to that curve. So again, I can pick any one of these and apply it to this curve. And speaking of curves, we can go in here to our stroke menu. Let's go ahead and go polyframe here. So we have a bunch of curve options in here and the ones I'm gonna uh, change are uh, bend start and bend end. I want those off or on and then I want lock start on or off and then repel strength down. So I can treat this like a, uh, basically a tentacle, just like these little arms here. And I can increase the size of this. I can drag this out. I can tap S to change my brush size and tap it again to update uh, the size of this object. Um, in fact, I can even flatten it out. If I take the Z intensity down, I can flatten it a bit. And where the tapering is coming from is this uh, fall off right here. So if I wanted to go from big to still big to very small, a little bit um, faster, you can do this or you can do the opposite. You can just go in here and change this curve and then tap to update like so. And you're gonna see it's able to curl in on itself a lot. Um, what we can do is we can go down here to our brush modifiers and we can say max bend angle. If I turn this down to zero, you're gonna see it's gonna kind of repel off of itself. So, you know, if there was like a vertebrae or a railroad or something like that, where you wouldn't necessarily want it to touch itself, um, you can turn that up. So again, we can treat this uh, as if it was just a little uh, tentacle arm in here. And again, we can tap S to increase that size just a bit. And very quickly and easily, we can position uh, a little tentacle arm in our scene. Uh, heading back over to our slides. And again, just a quick transition here, 2021.7, uh, we cover a number of these uh, features moving forward. So again, let's just hop right into that demo. And here we're getting a little more recent, and this was made right around the time of ZBrush 2021.7. So you can see we got an entire scene in here, all, all ZBrush created for the modeling. Uh, even got a little bit of animation on the arcade back there. And speaking of the arcade, and I could really choose any hard surface thing uh, for this demo, you know, the skateboard or the arcade or this little waterproof tape player, but uh, we'll go ahead and stick with the arcade for now. So again, here's the entire scene. Uh, any number of techniques uh, that we talked about you could use on these, but if I hop over here to the arcade, and go out of perspective mode. You're gonna see we have this little panel right here and uh, we can recreate this fairly easily. If we uh, go through here, I'm just gonna drop in a, a cube right on top of here. We'll go ahead and drop that off. And again, I'm not gonna worry too much about, you know, while I'm in here, you know, moving verts around and you know, painstakingly uh, moving geometry to get what I want because I can I can let ZBrush do the heavy lifting for me. Another one of those examples of, you know, zero mesh half, adapt size down, detect my edges, give me new geometry. Um, if I'm going to be slicing through this, maybe I'll subdivide some time, uh, a couple times, uh, delete lower. And then again, I'm just going to grab my knife brush here. And uh, oops, looks like we need to scale this out a bit. Not a huge deal, but again, you know, cut in your shape. And uh, we're recreating this, it's kind of a basic shape, but you know, obviously feel free to cut in whatever zany shape you want. And remember, you can go in here to BBA, which is your bevel arc brush. Uh, I might talk about this too. If you hit BBF, that's bevel flat, and that's literally just gonna give you a, a flat bevel across. But BBA does that arc uh, based on the radius that you dial in. So you can go in here and you can smooth uh, these uh, borders out here. So instead of, again, moving verts uh, around to get uh, the, the shape that you want, you can just as easily go through here. And again, I can zero mesh the entire thing or just take this top piece here, delete hidden, zero mesh half. Uh, I guess we don't need to detect edges for that one. And we have a new mesh here. So we can go through here, Q mesh, poly group all, pull out some thickness. Um, if I want that rubber border, I can just, you know, duplicate this off. 
I suppose an easy way to get this is hold down control shift, select lasso. If you run that on a border, we'll go through and select these uh, entire edge rings so I can invert that selection, geometry modify topology, delete hidden, and then go in here and just say Q mesh polygroup ball. We can pull that out. We still have our, um, if we go to unmesh mesh center, we still have our pivot set so we can make this bigger or smaller. And in fact, if we want to kind of bubble this out, we can go in here to insert multiple edge loops, interactive elevation. I can click and pull, and we can kind of just round that out just a little bit here. Let's make it all its own polygroup. Uh, so now I can go in here to, you know, again, uh, crease PG, crease level of two, maybe smooth subdiv of three, uh, all things we talked about before. And now we have, you know, our entire panel shape with the rubber border. And then on top of here, it's just a simple matter of going in here and just, you know, grabbing a cylinder on here splitting those off. We can really quickly, you know, group by normals, go in here, Q mesh polygroup all. Just kind of push that down along its surface normal. Maybe we'll do an inset here. And if I want this button to kind of dip in, I can invert this. So flip these normals around. We can close a convex hole, just kind of pull in a little bit here. We'll go ahead and make that its own uh, polygroup as well. In fact, we can take this, control shift, S to shrink, control W, and we'll flip this on back. And then if I want to do, you know, this rounded out thing here, we can again insert multiple edge loops. We can round this out, or we can go through here and we can just put in a bevel uh, along here. And uh, we can say Q mesh polygroup ball. We can hold down control and pop out a copy of this. And we can put in that little plastic ring. Again, we can say, you know, thin this out. Let's do polygroup island for that target. And then again, insert multiple edge loops, interactive elevation. We'll just pull that out here. I'm gonna go do a quick uh, group by normals. Let's make these both the same. And then we can go in here to say, again, we can increase our PGs, uh, dynamic crease level of uh, two, smooth sort of, of whatever. And then we can have our little button here and you can turn that into an IMM brush if you want to, or you can just duplicate this thing around. Just control drag, uh, unmask, and then control drag mask these ones out and just move them. Uh, into place. So again, super, super fun and easy to, you know, just kind of model this stuff. And again, any number of things to, or techniques that we've learned to extrude pieces off or go through and Boolean things or knife brush and bevel arc and Ziri mesh uh, to really, really quickly make not only uh, an arcade, but also you know, an entire skateboard was made the exact same way. Uh, nunchucks, an entire Ninja Turtle, sunglasses, uh, this whole Pizza Hut sign was all made using, uh, you know, just a few simple techniques at a ZBrush. Uh, you know, simple techniques added up for a complex object. And then back in here, we've talked about extractor brushes, which I used uh, on this guy to kind of clean him up. Let's go ahead and say all high. Uh, but one thing I didn't really talk about uh, is uh, stroke interpolate. So we can go through here with our standard brush. Let's go in here to B S scribe chisel, and I'm going to turn on RGB. And you know what? We'll just drop in a texture through here. So now when I pull this out, you're going to see we have a curve. Let's go ahead and turn on poly paint here. We can have a uh, texture. And as I drag this out, you're gonna see we can have a texture applied and a 3D alpha applied, uh, as well as we can go in here to Z add and tap to update the stroke. We can pull uh, on this curve. Again, it's just a stroke applied to a curve. And if we go down here to alpha and texture, you see we can control uh, a transition between two different alphas and two different textures if we want to. Now I don't have time to get super deep in on that, but one really quick and easy one is if we have a stroke here and then another stroke here, we can go up here to stroke interpolate and then I go ahead and interpolate strokes between those two and in fact if you remember this uh, history that we used a while back if we go back through our history to where we have nothing and then we control tap this point in history as we move forward all these changes we've made up to this point we can go in here and we can adjust uh, adjust them so I can pull them in I can push them out so instead of just adjusting last, I can adjust however many strokes I've made up to this point uh, at the same time. And again, if I'm done with this, I can go ahead and tap off to get rid of that curve and then control tap this point in history to come back out. 
So here's the ZBrush 2022 new features, and we don't have time to cover everything, uh, but I picked a couple things in this next demo to at least kind of show you some base functionality. So let's hop back over there. And now we're caught up. We're in uh, ZBrush 2022 now, and there's a lot of really cool things you could do with this one. The first one I want to bring up is underneath Alpha. We have an Alpha bar relief section. Uh, in the olden days, what you had to do, um, oh, one thing you could do is Alpha grab dock, and that would grab a Z depth grab of your asset here. So if I take this object and I drag this out as a drag rect, you're going to see, uh, let's go ahead and turn on focal shift negative 100 so we get rid of that artifact at the top. Um, we don't get a whole lot of details in here because again, it's just depth from the front part of the object to the back. Not great. So what we can do now is with this alpha, we can create, uh, we can apply a bar relief and that'll convert that depth grab to a bar relief with detail on it. And you can even skip that part if you just want to, you know, let's get the backside here. Uh, if we just go in here and say make bar relief with whatever objects on your screen, it'll go ahead and make it for you. So now when we go through here, um, it'll go ahead and drag out what it captured. Now, uh, if we wanted to, you know, put it on a commemorative coin, for example, uh, if we just want to limit it to just this section right here, just control tap that poly group to unmask it. And then we can go back in here and again, drag this alpha out. And now we have our coin. And remember, you can also adjust last. You can go through here and you can even push it in if you want to. Um, so you can very quickly just dial that in. Uh, however, you can even skip that step. If you go in here to your asset here, go into subtool and append that coin mesh to the bottom of our stack here. And then we'll tap the coin, alt tap the coin to select it, push it in the back here and I'm gonna scale this up just a bit. So now if I was to go to, instead of alpha bar relief, we can go down here to subtool project bar relief. And now if I project it onto the coin, um, the coin is selected and anything that's not selected will project back to that coin. Uh, in this instance, we accidentally grab the legs. No big deal, just undo that. Control tap the section here, go out of solo mode. And then again, you can dial in whatever settings you'd like that will just project that back to our coin here. So now when I go out of solo mode, control drag, uh, you can see we got our nice uh, projection here. Um, it, let's also head back into our text because there's one more thing I want to talk about. So we're gonna, we'll are gonna we make a new text like we did earlier. I'm gonna go ahead and say, um, again, let's turn on our resolution so you can see what we're looking at here. I'm gonna crank up the resolution a bit, turn off adaptive, Maybe crank up our extrusion. And let's go ahead and switch this uh, to bold. So we got a nice uh, bold lettering here in our scene. So I'm gonna go through here and first we'll scale this down and we're gonna stamp this um, right onto our coin here. So let's go ahead and hide everything but this. I'm gonna push this back in here and we'll go ahead and get this to fit a little bit better. So I'm gonna scale this down and we're gonna go in here and do a little bit of a bend arc and we'll curve this in change this radius a bit and move this into place. So now uh, this can be, if we turn this to subtractive, we can go in here to live Boolean. And now you can see, again, this is a live Boolean. So we can just punch this right in there uh, and we're in good shape. Um, and if we want to apply this Boolean, we can go down here to Boolean and go ahead and say, make Boolean mesh. And if we go grab that, you're going to see we're looking at 1.436 million polygons, which for ZBrush, as we all know, is nothing. That's that's a easy street for ZBrush. Uh, however, you may notice that like, oh, dang it, uh, I wish we had a bevel around the outside of these uh, this text. That's going to be kind of difficult to do, especially with you know 1.463 million polygons. Um, it's not a huge deal. We can grab these polygroups, hit Control W and then uh, ins invert that visibility, control W. So now I just have a polygroup border between the letters and the coin. And now I can hop into right underneath Boolean, we have Bevel Pro. And I put this window in here so we can see it. There's a bunch of settings in here that you can set, but essentially what it's showing you is the polygroup border, uh, the thickness of the bevel amount that's dialed in. And if we wanna see it, we can hit auto apply. And there we go. So now we're getting a preview of what it'll look like when we hit this OK uh, button down here. Uh, however, if we want, we can turn off auto apply. And then when we send it over by hitting OK, that'll go ahead and in our scene, drop in a Boolean object here. So if we turn off, turn on live Boolean, you're going to see this is the geo it created. And that's what's going to allow this to be um, 
beveled. Now, instead of doing that, if you if you want to, let's go ahead and turn off live boolean here. We can hop back into Bevel Pro. And this time, if you hit auto apply and say okay, that'll hop back in. It'll add those bevel uh, that bevel geometry for you. And again, this is on a 1.5 million polygon or point uh, object, but we can still go in there and get the bevels that we need uh, at any point. So pretty cool in my book. And we'll hop back over to the slides. And that's it. So you can find me on the internet. Uh, just Google my name, Michael Pavlovich. Uh, you can find me at, at PavMike on some of those other places. Uh, the big two I want to show you here, is, and the differences between them, is the Art Station page and the YouTube page. The YouTube page has pretty much everything and some other odds and ends that don't quite make it on the Art Station page. But uh, here's a, the, for example, the full live stream episodes. These are all in here. So every month I stream on my channel and ZBrush is ZBrush, ZBrush Live. Uh, we cover all sorts of any new features or any kind of demo stuff. So if you see like, hey, how did you make the Ninja Turtle? Uh, it's all in here. And then in the case of the Ninja Turtle or the Bison, or if you just want to watch the Pizza Hut sign, uh, all of these things are in here. So again, if you click on anything in here, there's going to be more resources for you, resources for you available outside of just you know new features and stuff. There's also all sorts of fun breakdowns, anatomy or uh, Star Wars stuff. You know, just kind of going through here and creating things in ZBrush, either during the live stream or just one-off recordings. So let's head back over to the camera. And I uh, just want to say thanks. Thanks for having me out here and letting me go down memory lane and revisit some of this uh, ZBrush functionality, uh, which is interesting to go back and revisit some of that because some of it I'm like, oh, you know what? I should use that more. Um, so again, thank you for having me and uh, hopefully it's helpful.